ice flushing. This relates to what we just talked about with flushing. Now, ice flushing, for those that don't know, is really just taking a bunch of ice, dumping it on top of the medium before harvest, letting that ice melt, cold water down in the root zone. And it is said that this actually stresses the plants into making more secondary metabolites, trichomes, for example, and also brings out purple color. Is there any truth to any of that? Yeah, I would say that the anthocyanin, which is the purple pigments, you know, the biosynthesis of them can be tied to um, exposure to cold. And I think part of what it has to do is like plants have membranes that are that are like uh, phospholipids. And if you've ever taken a glass of cold water and added a drop of oil into it, the temperature of the water forces the coalescence of the oil. So you get this like distinct blob or drop of oil that floats on top. Um, Whereas if you have a glass of warm water and you drop oil inside of it, that oil could disperse a little bit more evenly across the top. So it tends to like stretch out and it tends to not just clump up together like this, you know. Um, when you put ice on the soil and ice flush your plants, really what you're doing is exposing them to cold temperatures that create a sort of brittleness, if you will, with the phospholipids. Because again, these are these are phospholipids, they're oils, they're, they're you know, fats basically. Um, and the plant's defensive mechanism is it doesn't want that fat to kind of coalesce like that because for their cell wall membranes, for example, or for the integrity of these membranes, it's really important for them to be able to kind of stretch out and maintain that adequate reach that they have across the, the full volume or surface area of, of wherever they're located. Um, and so anthocyanins, which are those purple pigments, can be produced by plants because they'll kind of modify the properties of those phospholipids a little bit. They'll allow them to be exposed to colder temperatures without necessarily becoming so brittle and cracking, if you will. And that's um, that's an important consideration. But um, ultimately, I think putting I, you know the ice water flush thing, I think it can actually do more harm than good for a couple of reasons. One is that any time that we're talking about that purple pigment being synthesized, those anthocyanins directly compete for substrates um, with you know like CBD and THC and some of these other molecules. Um, there's a competition between the two of them. So you have a building block that either gets diverted to make a purple pigment or it gets diverted to make something called olive acid. Um, and there, there's a little bit of crosstalk between them. So they kind of get balanced out. But the idea is that plants are taking in CO2 from the environment around them. And the real question is, where does that carbon go? Because if the carbon goes towards making a purple pigment, it could have instead gone towards making a monoterpene or a, a sesquiterpene or maybe some CBD. Um, or other cannabinoids. Um, and so it becomes a little bit of a problem in that context. The other reason that it could be an issue is because when you have really cold temperatures uh, in the feed water, you know, if you're exposing your plants to that, it's the flow of energy coming in through photosynthesis. Typically that energy comes in and you want to get your plants to express all of those wonderful colors and flavors and aromas that you possibly can. But when you expose your plants to low temperatures, what ends up happening is that energy actually gets diverted away from the production of secondary metabolites, and it instead becomes uncoupled from ATP generation. And there's something called thermogenesis, which is just generation of heat. You know, the, the practical sort of application here might be like every time that you eat a meal, you might notice your body temperature actually goes up a little bit. Um, and this is possible to measure. I think it's been done a number of times. But when you eat food... Your body's breaking that food down and is releasing that energy just as heat because your body needs to maintain a particular temperature in order to operate efficiently. Homeostasis is what this is called. So maintaining the optimum temperature to allow all the enzymes in your body to function, all the proteins to work properly. And really, you know, you don't want cold and brittle joints. Like some people might notice this if they have really sensitive joints. When the temperatures go down, the joints become really stiff and the joints become really sensitive. And this is part of the same phenomena in plants meaning that if they're exposed to cold temperatures that are below their threshold, instead of taking that energy from the sun and producing compounds with it, they'll take the energy from the sun and produce heat with it. And the goal of producing heat is to raise the temperature of the water that they've been exposed to so that it becomes sufficient for their basic operation. And that's always just an energy tax placed on the plant. So I would say ice flushing is probably not um, very beneficial. It does slow down total transpiration in plants. It does decrease the availability of nutrients. You know, if you've got a cold glass of water versus a hot glass of water, you can fit a lot more sugar inside of that hot glass of water. You can add teaspoon after teaspoon and keep stirring, and that hot water will dissolve all of that sugar way more effectively than a glass of cold water is going to dissolve that same amount of sugar. And plants are faced with the same problem. They take CO2 out of the air, and they're trying to create sugars. 
And in order for those sugars to be properly dissolved inside of their own tissues, it requires the water to be at a particular temperature. And plants are very heavily invested in maintaining that um, temperature, you know, mark because they don't have the ability to just put on another layer or, or a jacket if they get too cold or they can't like stand up and walk somewhere else where it's a little bit more ideal. They have to deal with the environment that they're exposed to. And if that environment is cold, their primary focus becomes let's generate heat. The secondary metabolites are useless without a functional a cell to begin with. You know, the, the primary purpose at that moment in time is going to be for the plant to take the energy from the sun and create heat, which is a problem when you're trying to create colors and flavors and aromas and all these things. Another thing that's doing is it's really slowing down your microbes, right? The lower the temp, the slower the microbes function. And if you're relying on the microbes in order to break down organic matter and uh, cycle nutrients uh, so the plant can uptake it, well, you're kind of slowing down that process by adding ice water into your medium there. I personally, what I usually do to bring out the colors towards the end of flowering is I'll just lower the ambient temp, you know, the, the room temp into the low 60s, high 50s degree Fahrenheit. And that, uh, that usually does help bring out some of the colors. I would think that might be a better approach to bring out the colors if that's kind of your goal is to kind of get some colors out of it, doing that route instead of doing the ice flushing. Yeah, yeah. And there's that antifreeze sort of mechanism that we talked about too. You know, just dropping the temperatures a little bit will um, create a little shock in the plants and they have a vested interest in not only um, offsetting the temperature changes, but also producing compounds that can help them deal with or mitigate that kind of stress. So um, that's where the purple pigments start to come in. They, they can modify the way that some of these compounds behave at really low temperatures, like those those fatty acids and those oils, which tend to just kind of clump up and come all together. This is not an ideal state for all of your cells to be in because you want your cells to take up a large surface area. Large, You want that plasticity. You want that cell to be able to kind of move around and expand because there's always water coming in during the day. The vacuoles fill up as the roots take that water up. So you want the cell to be able to expand and then also to contract once the water leaves the vacuole and then gets destined for photosynthesis or for transpiration. But this constant like water pump phenomena where the plants are swelling up as they fill up with water and then they're kind of shrinking back down as they, um, as that water leaves the vacuum. You want to maintain this dynamic with the plants, and at really cold temperatures, the outer layers become very brittle, and it becomes difficult for the plants to effectively expand without cracking the, uh, you know, outer layers of the cell walls, and they don't like that because you know it starts to create oxidative damage. It starts to you know destroy the cells and the organelles. So they produce these purple pigments that modify those phospholipids, and even at low temperatures now the plant can properly go through this expansion and contraction process. This clip is brought to you by Happy Hydro. For all your garden equipment needs, visit happyhydro.com, link is in the video description, and use the discount code MrGrowIt 